Okay. Hello, thanks for joining in for the Q&A today with myself, Adam Wing, Football Development Officer at Derbyshire FA. Along with me today is Oliver Cooch. Oliver, would you mind just giving an introduction to the people watching this that may not know who you are or your involvement? Yes, of course. Um, yes, as you say, my name is Oliver Cooch. I'm the chairman of the Chesterfield Futsal League. Um, I'm also chairman of the Chesterfield Futsal Club. Um, and this season, although it hasn't made much difference because of the pandemic, I'm also the uh, head of youth development at Sheffield Futsal Club. That's great. Um, can you give a bit of an overview about how you were first introduced to futsal? Yes, um, it was a long time, well, I say a long time ago, it, it, about 2012, 2013. I can't remember what first caught my interest about futsal, um, but certainly uh, about then, um, the football club I'm involved with, Chesterfield Junior Blues, started playing futsal as an additional activity, not instead of football, but as an additional activity. And after um, a couple of months of, of uh, just trying it out, we then offered futsal to every age group in the football club. And that was 2014, I think. And that led on to us playing some friendlies. We played games against Hasland. We played games against uh, Wingerworth. And we played some games against Chesterfield Football Club Academy, which was interesting because they were football players and we were playing at futsal. So that was an interesting experiment. Um, and then the FA held in 2014, the first of their uh, futsal conferences at St George's Park. This one was called Futsal Catalyst for Change. It's a two day conference and it had in it as participants, um, I think the former national coach of the Spanish side, the, the, the then current coach of the Belgian side. And these people did hour long, hour and a half long coaching sessions of futsal and it really sort of brought home how different futsal was from football how technical it was um how much detail the coach been into and that really made me very excited so i went back to all the teams we've been playing friendlies against and said any chance of starting a league and everyone said well, well yes okay um but in 2015 we had a public meeting in chesterfield um of all the football clubs that were interested and we agreed we would set up a league and that started in 2016 so since 2016, we've had a league which people can just drop in and join, either formally or informally, and that's built over the years. One other thing happened, actually, about the same time, about 2015, 2016, was that uh, Ernest Cardona, who was the head coach at Sheffield Football Club, put on some CPD sessions for coaches. And several local teams went along. Um, Junior Blues, my club, went along. So did Somersault Rangers as well. And we saw there at first hand um, a player who I think played for Barcelona's B team at futsal, how they interpreted futsal. And it was so different from um, the English, the British way of coaching football um, that really took our breath away. But it gave us a real spark, a real incentive to try and get going. That's great. You mentioned there a lot of the um, similarities, obviously your involvement with the Chesterfield Junior Blues football team and then obviously your, your involvement with the futsal team and the league. Um, what would you say to any coaches or players out there that the benefits of futsal could bring to them on, on an 11 side football pitch? Oh, well, there's lots. Um, the first thing to remember about futsal, I think, when it comes to coaching, is that it's played on a small court, about 20 metres by 40. Um, we use metres, not yards in futsal. That's a, a tiny difference, but it's yes. ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you play with a smaller ball. It's a size smaller than in football, um, has less bounce and has a hard surface. So imagine you're doing all the sort of football type things, but on a hard surface with a smaller ball um, in a much tighter areas. So things like ball control, ball mastery, in confined spaces. It's a wonderful sport to improve that. Um, making decisions in tight areas. Uh, keeping position under pressure. These are all football concepts as well, of course. And so doing it in futsal makes you better at it at football as well. The confined space thing is important. I think someone once said that you could get about seven or eight futsal courts onto a normal 11-11 football pitch. So a futsal court contains 10 players. Imagine a foot a football pitch containing 75 or 80 players. They have some <laughs> idea of just how little space there is for individual players. So to be skilled at futsal gives you an enormous uh, kick when it comes to, to football. The other thing about futsal, of course, uh, again, which is in parallel with football, is creativity. But again, imagine being more creative in an environment where you have to operate quickly, where the ball moves very quickly, but very truly. There's no mud, for example. Um, you can operate as in, in pairs, what in futsal they call dualities. You can operate as a whole team. But just as any football coach will tell their players that it, whatever you do affects the game, whether you're on the ball or not. In futsal, you're never far from the ball. You're never far from the opponents. 
every move you make makes a difference to the whole team. So all those kind of skills that futsal brings out and focuses on are applicable to football as well. Yeah, I think it's interesting you mentioned about Barcelona. Um, obviously, a key player that everybody watching this and everybody that isn't necessarily into football or futsal will have heard of, Lionel Messi. There's a, a quote from him where he says when he was growing up, um, obviously in Argentina, all he would play would be futsal. So I think it's it's really interesting to see someone that's, depending on where you look at the argument, is the best in the game. Uh, it depends if you look at him or Ronaldo, but it is interesting that he obviously, he played played futsal originally and, and started off with that. So I do, I do find that personally um, really interesting. Um, you also mentioned earlier about the 2014, 2015, the, the start of the, the Chesterfield Futsal League. Could you give it just a, a rough idea on, on, on the growth of the league and the number of teams that you've seen in, in Derbyshire or, or Chesterfield specifically since your involvement? We, uh, memory serves me right, we started with about 20 teams or so for about a dozen clubs. Um, we, the first season we had was a very short season, so people weren't committing to very much if they wanted to join us. This year, had we gone ahead with the full season this year, which of course we haven't, um, we'd have had 72 teams from 20, 22 clubs. Uh, they're not just clubs in Derbyshire either. We've got clubs from Sheffield, we've got clubs from East Riding of Yorkshire, um, we've, got, we've got clubs from Nottinghamshire, for example. So it's not just Chesterfield. This is a pretty widely spread league now. Um, and some of the more, some of the older groups, on the under 16s last season, for example, we had. Um, University of Nottingham played London Health this year, and that was close to elite standard, um, younger kids of course, and, and watching them was fantastic, the speed of reaction, how they worked together was absolutely wonderful. But more than that, we've um, we now run summer tournaments, um, we have our own cup competitions, of course we now are part of your Derbyshire County Cup competition where teams from the Chesterfield League play against other teams from Derbyshire and the winners go on to represent Derbyshire in the FA what used to be the FA Futsal Cup, now the FA Pokemon Cup. So we've really developed and we've got a pretty full offer now. There's not much, I think, that we don't do. That's great. So, so you mentioned about the growth there and, and obviously the, the competition that does touch in other counties. Um, so where would you like to see Futsal in Derbyshire in, in the coming seasons? Obviously, this season has it has taken a bit of a hit due to the, the pandemic, but obviously there's, there is potential there for growth. Well, I think there's a, there's a range of things I'd like to see. First of all, I'd like to see more clubs try futsal, more teams try futsal. I think every team that's tried it has enjoyed it. The players especially have enjoyed it. Coaches have a problem sometimes because it's yet another thing for them to do. And most coaches are already very heavily worked. So if you're adding futsal to your workload, that's asking quite a lot. But the players adore it. So the, the, the parents love it. It's indoors for a start. It's dry. It's indoors. It's in the warm. Um, so there's lots of of those sorts of things going for it. But what I'd what I like to see, I'd like to see more teams try it, more people try it. Um, and we're going to run some drop-in sessions in Chesterfield, which Sport England are going to pay for. Um, some for anybody who wants to come along, some for women and girls who want to come along, just to try it, free of charge, just to give it a go. Um, two other things I want to do. Um, first is that we have an arrangement with Sheffield Futsal Club um, that grassroots players who show some inclination towards the game, show some skills, show some uh, willingness to work hard at the game, uh, might be able to progress to sessions with, first of all, with the development centre that I run for Sheffield Football Club, and possibly even to sessions with the first team coaches, one of whom is an England, is an England coach. Um, so there's a pathway there for players who want to try to make futsal a bit of a career, as it were, to have a go at it. I'm not saying you know, many will make it, perhaps, um, it's like all these things. Um, but there is a player pathway, so anybody who wants to give it a go can try. Um, the second thing is, with colleagues in Nottinghamshire and in Leicestershire, who are planning to run next season, an East Midlands um, uh, league, probably at under 16s, perhaps under 18s, for teams who are already quite strong, uh, and there are some plenty of good, strong teams around, to see whether we can set up some sort of, first of all, regional, perhaps even national league, which will be underneath the first teams playing in the National League and the National Series, but nevertheless, a competition which again will give people a chance to chance to progress. So they're two quite exciting uh, possi possibilities. Um, but I think the people who need most hope, help actually are the, are the, are the coaches, because it's yet another thing to do. Um, so one thing that we have done already, but we're going to repeat is a, a coach CPD session in uh, Chesterfield. Again, we got supporting them funding to make that free of charge so that's something we want to do and encourage coaches need a lot of support to make this work but um i think the future's rosy that's great and and all those those plans obviously i know 
obviously through my role what is going on in the background so but for anybody that's watching this that does, isn't quite sure of the next steps what would you recommend to a coach or a player that's watching this and thinks right I really want to to get involved in in futsal well there's two things um the first thing I say is if you don't know much about futsal or if you do know something about it but have never really seen it go onto YouTube and just look at futsal there are dozens and dozens and dozens of wonderful clips on on YouTube, including whole game clips of uh, of World Cup matches. I mean, to see World Cup games, that's the highest level of the sport there is in the world, played at full speed is really, really exciting. But something that's slightly off the wall, which I also recommend to people when they ask is, go onto YouTube and see if you can find a clip of the Iranian women's team playing. Futsal is very, very big in Iran. I think there are more players in Iran than there are in any other country in the world. And their women players play the game not just um, at speed uh, and very skillfully, but it's such a, it's a sort of flowing movement. It's absolutely fantastic to watch. Um, and if we could emulate the kind of standard they play at, we'd be doing, doing very, very well. The second thing, of course, is, is to uh, sign up for the event you're running on the, or we're running on the 24th of February. Um, it's online, unfortunately. It has to be online, given the circumstances. But nevertheless, it'll be a chance to meet up with some um, national speakers from the FA. Um, I'll be there. Others from other parts of the empire in, in Dove will be there as well. Um, I, I hope it'll be a very interesting and exciting session and we'll answer questions and make people think about how they might progress the sport. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, so just following on from that, again, as Oliver alluded to there, there will be a introduction to Futsal Evening on Tuesday, the 24th of February. The link to sign up will be on this tweet uh, that will go out um, so if you are interested you can do that or you can contact myself which is adam.wing at derbyshirefa.com and I will certainly get you a place on that and as Oliver alluded to we do have two guest speakers which will be announced and there are also people from the grassroots side of the game that will be able to guide you and show you when and how you can play. Um, so thank you for your time Oliver that's great thanks for all the information and I'll see you on the 24th. See you Adam.